Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video and today in front of us we have the Xiaomi Mi Ultra Short Throw Projector. This is a 5000 Ansi Lumen 1080p laser projector and it's from Xiaomi. It's got a built-in Android OS, super bright projection, as well as what should be some pretty awesome built-in Dolby speakers with DTS HD. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so first we get the manual as well as some start phone. Let's quickly tickle the manual. It's going to be in Chinese and we're not going to be able to read anything really. Uh, it sounds like they have included a uh, microfiber cloth, which we have a bunch of here now. And uh, it just tells you a few things here and there. It's all in Chinese, so nothing really to read here. And then we get the start phone piece, which reveals the goodies on the inside. So on the sides first we got some silica gels to keep this thing nice and dry. Inside we have the remote control that we're going to take a look at in just a bit as well as the power cord which is in this format. And lastly of course we have the Xiaomi projector itself which is again pretty heavy so let's carefully put it aside here. There we go. And that's pretty much it for the box because it's Xiaomi. So this is actually a Chinese slash Australian plug that is used in a few other countries but we're not going to be using that but this plug is a pretty nice plug i gotta say but unfortunately we cannot use it here but it is a standard three prong cable so we're going to be trying that out that said it is a 200 to 240 volt projector now if you guys remember we have ran the xiaomi mi tv 4a with 110 volts in canada and it worked just fine so hopefully that is the same case right here but again it's a standard three prong cable so we should be able to get that running all right so here's the remote and it seems like this is actually using bluetooth and it does have a built-in microphone so i guess we have some uh, voice functions but of course they're probably going to be in Chinese unless somehow we are able to change that into English now the software is not going to fully change in English from what I've seen it's going to be similar to the Xiaomi TV but who knows we'll see how that goes but the nice thing is that this thing is using Bluetooth and not just infrared but that can be argued uh, the controls are actually pretty good everything is nice and tactile very clicky and lightweight and this does use two AAA batteries and on the top here you can see that there is the microphone and that's pretty much it, so let's put the controller aside and finally take a look at the silica gel. No, I'm just kidding. Here is the projector itself. It's nicely wrapped and it's pretty heavy. It does feel like the price point that you're paying for because this thing is pretty damn expensive. And if you're wondering, yes, this was sent in by GearBest for review. But as always, we're going to be reviewing it and showing you guys the pros and cons and pretty much everything you want to know about this thing. So you want to open it from the bottom first and flip it over. Or if you want, you can just rip open the bag. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the front. The first thing that you're going to be taking a look at while this thing is set up. So here's what it looks like. This is where the speakers will be. Here's a picture of what the speakers look like on the inside from the website. So we should be getting some pretty awesome sound from this thing. Here we have an LED indicator. If we take a look inside here, we got a couple things. So it seems like we get some kind of uh, infrared sensors or something. And of course, in the center right there, that is where we have the laser projector slash lens slash all the good stuff that's going to be projecting onto your wall. And of course, we have the logo right there, Laser Home Cinema Projector with the Xiaomi Mi logo. And now if you flip it over to the side, we got some ventilation as well as the focus dial right over here. And take a look at the other side, we have more ventilation, a USB port, as well as another focus dial, which is pretty nice. Or it could be something else, who knows, we'll find out very soon. It seems like we actually got two fans right over here. And take a look at the bottom here, we got a bunch of things going on. So we got the speaker holes right here, we got some rubber feet right over here, mounting points for some sort, uh, more ventilation. And lastly, in the back, we got a pretty nice selection of ports. So first of all, we got three HDMI inputs, and one of them is HDMI ARC. Another USB, this time it's a USB 3.0, an audio output, an AV input, which is pretty interesting, but we don't have the cable included. We probably have to buy that separately. Ethernet, and of course, that three-prong AC connector. And that's pretty much it for the outside. There's nothing much going on. It's just very simplistic, very nice looking, elegant, sleek looking, minimalistic, you name it. There's nothing left but to actually just go ahead and power this thing up or try to power it up with my puny Canadian 110 volts. All right, so the moment of truth, will it work or will it catch fire? Let's find out. Oh, there we go. And it works. All right, let's go ahead and turn off the lights. And we will be doing a test with the lights on. But for now, let's see what we have here. All right, so it's kind of crooked and you guys can see some scanning lines. That's normal for uh, laser projectors. You see that a lot with pretty much all the other projectors, even the ones from LG. But right now, I'm just giving you some instructions on how to use this thing. And of course, finally, we have the UI, which we have seen previously on the Xiaomi Mi TV 4, which uh, I didn't like too much because the signal was actually being transferred through the Android OS and projected to you. And that's what I think was causing a bunch of delay on the TV. Hopefully that's not the case here, but who knows, we'll find out very soon. But uh, a quick overview here before we uh, go off. Yeah, you get a bunch of things you can view, you can stream movies, uh, TV shows, kids shows, you name it, all that good stuff and uh, stream some TV as well, but of course it's all in Chinese and most of it's not even gonna work because 
it's uh, region locked. So uh, we'll be back in just a bit after we set this thing up, change it to English mostly, and plug it in and continue on with the review. So we'll be back in a day or two. All right, we are back and here's what the projector looks like on a projector screen. Now, this is a pretty cheap projector screen that I might make a video on later on and show you guys what the experience is like installing one or buying a cheap one because this one was around 109 Canadian dollars. It was off Amazon. It came pretty quickly, but of course, it still has problems and uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in another video. But for that in mind, the projection here might not be perfect as in the image being a bit distorted around the edges and things looking wobbly and not straight. And that's of course because of the projector screen that I have installed here. It's a pretty cheap one, but yeah, I'll update you guys about it in another video. And if you guys are wondering, this is 85 inches worth of projection. This thing can do 150, but uh, I currently do not have 150 inches of free wall. This is pretty much the biggest wall that I have that is not occupied by something. And one last thing before we turn off the lights, this is what it looks like under heavy lighting. I've got two really bright lights and uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. So. Let's go ahead and turn off the lights and see what we have here. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the actual turning on of this projector. Again, it is using Bluetooth and it's not using infrared for any of the functions, including power. So we can turn on the projector with the power button being virtually anywhere where there's a connection that is between the projector and the remote control. And the boot up times are also pretty good. It doesn't take long for it to boot up. Unlike the Xiaomi Mi TV that we have here, it does take a while on the TV. If you have watched the Mi TV 4A review, you'd realize that when we have Wi-Fi connected, it would actually get presented with a Chinese ad before the TV turns on, which was pretty annoying. And the only way it was to turn that off was to actually disable Wi-Fi, which is stupid. So yeah, that is the home screen. That is what it looks like. Basically, you have a ton of tabs. You have a movie tab, you have streaming tab, you have food, sales, anime, cartoons, just pretty much jam-packed with content that you could watch. But all this, again, is for Chinese only. So kind of wish I was in China and I learned Chinese because all this stuff looks amazing. In North America, we rarely have anything like this. Um, you pretty much have to have a bunch of different apps working together on a platform and you have to customize them yourself in order to get those apps going. But here, it seems like you can stream all that good stuff by having like a uh, monthly subscription or something, a VIP subscription, and you get to watch pretty much all the latest movies and stuff right off the projector itself. And yes, some of the stuff does work. From what I've seen a couple of cartoons, they have a uh, sample video they can watch. So you have one episode for free and the rest ones you have to pay for. And some movie trailers that are badly compressed with Chinese text and dubbing. And that's pretty much all you get if you were to use this as an English speaking uh, user. So yeah, I mean, it looks amazing. All this content, all this interface, I mean, it's all remote friendly. But yeah, unfortunately we cannot switch it to a regular Android OS, nor we can change it to English and, you know, use any of this stuff. And from the looks of it, it's pretty much region locked. So that is that. And pressing down on the arrow up button will bring you to this menu right here. It gives you the date, the time, the weather forecast, and a few shortcuts like settings, notifications, and the smart home app, which will have you connected to your Xiaomi smart devices and some of those security cameras and pretty much any appliance that is connected through the Xiaomi connection. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about what we are using here. So first of all, to change it mostly to English, as you can see, some stuff is in English, some stuff is not. And you're probably seeing Play Store and you're like, oh great, we can even install Play Store, change the home screen and whatnot. No, that is actually, I installed the Play Store, I installed Chrome and all the other apps that are in English right here, I have installed myself and none of them work. YouTube kind of works, Netflix kind of works, Crunchyroll does not work. And basically the way you change this to English is not through the settings app right here. Instead, you install an APK that they have listed on the website or pretty much you can get any APK that is meant for the settings menu. And that will actually bring you to the original setting menu for the Android OS, the standard one that you usually see. Then you go to languages and input, change to English, and that's how you can get a mostly English interface. That's how you can get it. Yes, you can install apps and uh, you can install Kodi and that's probably just enough for you. And then you can have pretty much everything set up on there. But if you don't use Kodi, then you're gonna probably need some Chromecast or an external Android device. Speaking of Android device, uh, the inputs again, we have three HDMI inputs and an AV input, as well as um, a USB connection. So you can plug in a USB drive and it'll tell you, you wanna view it, you wanna view it in gallery. What do you wanna do with the USB? It will tell you and uh, it will pretty much open up whatever you're doing. It's an art gallery. So these are all preloaded pictures from what I understand. Yeah, you're not gonna use that much. You're probably gonna be using the file browser mainly. And now if we move on to the user center, that's where you have some of your uh, history, favorites, VIP, basically whatever you try to stream here. So it will pretty much read whatever you have streamed before or try to stream at least because none of this works. Like if you go from Gintama right here, the live action and try to play it, 
it's probably not going to work. I mean, it is a really cool service. It even has all the characters and the cast members and their names and whatever they're worked on. It's just really cool, but we can't use this. So you can see here, it says you got to pay for a subscription fee and whatnot. So if you click play on that, it's probably going to fail and not stream anything, or it's probably going to stream a movie trailer. But so far, I haven't got any of the movies to work at all. And of course, I can't read that. And the only way I can read that is using the Google Translate app and uh, taking a picture and having Google just translate whatever is on the screen. All right, so now let's go ahead and quickly switch gears and take a look at how you can actually adjust the focus adjustments, the keystone correction, as well as the height adjustments. For the first two, you can easily adjust those by holding down the menu button, which will bring this menu up. Starting from the left will bring you the focus, as well as the keystone and the extra settings menu. And this is where you can actually adjust the focus. So what we have here is some text and some lines. And basically how you adjust the focus is by simply clicking on the left and right arrows on your remote. For example, here it is not focused. The center does look pretty focused, but the corners are not and uh, it's not very clear on the camera, so let's go ahead and zoom in on one of the corners right there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the right arrow until I can get perfect focus. So there we go. And if we take a look at the right side, it is not perfectly in focus, and that is because of my projector screen. It's uneven, it's warped, but we can still work with that. And basically you go back and forth until you can get a perfect balance between both of them. And so far, I think I've got it right here. So everything looks pretty good. And now you can easily exit by clicking the back button. Now let's go ahead and check out the keystone correction on the second option right here in the menu. So what we have here is a fair amount of options and control for the keystone correction. First of them being the four or eight point. Basically this will give you an extra four points on each side of the projection and allow you to change those. So you can switch between four, which will allow you to change each corner. If you have a flat screen, that will help and make things easier. And if you have something warped like mine, then you're probably gonna need the eight point, which will give you an extra four points on the center of each side, which will allow you to get that extra control for that warped display. So that's pretty cool. Next, we have the reset. After that, you have confirm. And finally, over here, we have the fine tuning, which will give you a thin line or a thick line for that extra control. So the thick line will give you faster adjustments, while the thin line or the fine tuning will give you very precise movement, probably pixel by pixel, so it can help you get that perfect adjustment. And finally, if you go back, it will ask you if you want to confirm. Just go ahead and click confirm. And that's pretty much it for the focus and the keystone correction. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how you can actually adjust the height of this projector. All right, so if you guys remember in the unboxing, we had these dials on the sides here, on both the right and the left side. And basically, these dials are some very nice fine-tuning dials for the rubber feet under the projector. So there's one, there's two. And I think it takes about 20 seconds to fully turn these, and it takes a while to turn these. So yes, you do have a lot of adjustments in terms of height adjustments. You can get that perfect minute settings with these dials and uh, so far they're pretty good. And if you're wondering, that's what it looks like. So it's a lot of adjustments to work with and uh, you can just keep spinning these back and forth until you get that perfect height. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the settings menu that is built into this system. So first of all, we have the Wi-Fi connection. So this is where you can connect your Wi-Fi, your Ethernet, test the connection speed. Then we have general settings. And inside general settings, you can have the preview window. That's the one that is right over here. The one that is highlighted. That will be your preview window once you plug in something. So we'll take a look at that in just a bit. Then you can have it to autoplay, which is something that you probably want to turn on since you're not going to be using the built-in OS. So once you have a laptop or a desktop or a Chromecast hooked up to this thing, you can instantly have it turn on and switch to it automatically, which is a very useful option. The next option, I have no idea what it is. You have to put in some kind of pin code, maybe some kind of security thing. You can lock up people. Keyboard settings, device name, location, one touch place. So that's a very similar option to the first one. We're gonna turn that on anyways and see what happens. Then we have another option that we're probably not gonna be using. Moving on down, we have the user factory settings and auto brightness by IR. Now, this is pretty confusing. Now, you may think it automatically adjusts the brightness, but that is not the case. Basically, what this does is if you get near this thing and put your hand on top of it, the IR sensors right over here, the two of them on the sides, will turn off the display and uh, block your eyes from getting blinded because it's a pretty bright projector. So for example, you're about to install a new cable and you accidentally expose your eyes to the lens or your cat, for example, jumps on top of the projector, they're not gonna get blinded instantly because the projector would automatically turn off itself uh, to some extent and uh, block most of the light that is coming out from the lens. So hopefully saving your eye or saving your cat's eye. And if you are setting up this projector and you're trying to get that focus and doing a bunch of things and you are careful of not exposing your eyes directly to the lens, then you can turn it off here and uh, have it not be activated accidentally while you're trying to do those micro adjustments to get that perfect setup. And that's pretty much it for the general settings. Next, we have the device and Bluetooth. So this is pretty much where you can connect your Bluetooth devices. This is an Android OS. You can install some games through an APK so you can plug in a headphone, you can plug in a gamepad 
and uh, run stuff like that. Now, one of the most useful and cool features about this projector is that once you connect a Bluetooth headphone, not a headset, just a headphone with sound, then you can have whatever is being played and displayed on the projector, whether it's HDMI, AV, or the mirror cast. We'll take a look at that in just a bit. You can have all that audio being transferred directly to your wireless Bluetooth headphones. You can have your PC or PlayStation as well as your Chromecast directly plugged into this thing and whatever is being played on those platforms, you can have them all directly transferred to your Bluetooth headphones or Bluetooth speakers, which is awesome. Next up we have the security settings so we can set up some stuff and enable unknown sources. Over here we got some about settings and updates, nothing much here. Input settings, we'll already check that out. Sound, and that's where you can turn on and off the button sounds and choose what speaker input you can have. And inside this option is where you can actually set up and equalize the sound and one of them is custom so it will allow you to customize the bass and whatnot and have that full equalizer set up right over here. Of course, it's all in Chinese, but it does tell you which hertz and whatnot. And finally, display. And in display, you can have uh, some couple of settings here. So it says backlight mode. Basically, it just chooses between uh, color profile. This one is more purplish, I believe. This one is more neutral, which what I think is the best option to go for. And then highlight, which gives you a more warmer tint. And then moving on to display parameters, that is where you can customize and set your settings, including the RGB. You can set up each color and manually tune it to your liking. But uh, you also have some presets here and uh, you could adjust those as well. We have already taken a look at the keystone correction. We have already taken a look at the electronic focus and the projector mode here is where you can flip out the projector and whatnot. So you can mount the projector on the ceiling instead of having it directly on a table. And that is pretty much it for this menu. And now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the pre-installed apps. So here we have the TV manager. Basically it's just an optimization tool. It cleans up and does all that good stuff. I'm not gonna use it much really. Then we have the optimize, which is uh, pretty much a shortcut to what the TV manager does. We get the weather app, a video player that I'm not gonna be using much. And finally we have probably one of the most useful functions of this projector and that would be the option to actually broadcast something from your phone or tablet or laptop to the screen here wirelessly through both AirPlay as well as Miracast, which is pretty awesome on top of the Bluetooth function. So for example, if I go ahead and enable Miracast on my phone and open up the broadcast from the projector, I should be able to see it right here, typed in in Chinese, you can rename that to English uh, later on in the settings here. And then you can see that it says G4 connected, that is my LG G4. And there we go. We have my phone being directly broadcasted to the display here. And once you are connected, you're gonna have your phone, tablet, or laptop projected onto the display here. Pretty much mirroring whatever you do. Now, of course, it's gonna be a latency, pretty much broadcasting a whole video feed to the display here. And from there, you can go ahead and launch your favorite app like Crunchyroll, Netflix, YouTube, Reddit, 9gag, Facebook, WhatsApp, you name it. You wanna quickly share something, show someone something on the big screen, and uh, the easiest way to do it is pretty much through Miracast where it just pretty much mirrors your screen. Whatever's on your screen is gonna be displayed onto here, and that is that. And now, finally, let's go ahead and take a look at the HDMI function. So, right now, we have the Xbox One on the right and the Xiaomi Air 13 2017 Edition hooked up to the left, and the options that we have enabled to automatically switch to the HDMI are actually pretty useful, so it will pretty much instantly switch to the HDMI as soon as the OS boots up, which is very, very handy. And from there on, you want to go ahead and select whatever you want. And to connect to one of them, you pretty much click enter and you'll be sent right into them. And of course, from here, you can go ahead and play your favorite game and launch it and watch YouTube or just have it as your main console or system. And now, say you're done with your Xbox, you want to go ahead and switch to your PC. You simply drop a controller, go ahead and click on the home button and click on the HDMI 2 or whatever you have set up for the PC. And there you go. Now you're inside of your computer. And now in case there's a problem with the HDMI, you can easily switch it to the uh, HDMI 2.0. So you go into playback settings from the menu and then select on and it pretty much it will switch to the HDMI. So it is pretty simple and straightforward when it comes to the HDMI stuff. You just pretty much select what you want and get right into it. And I totally recommend enabling the automatic input switch. So whenever it sees an HDMI, it automatically switches to it instead of just sitting around on the home screen. All right, so now let's go ahead and test out what the latency is like. And how we're gonna do that is by having a PC, of course, with a direct mouse connection. So we have a wired mouse hooked up to a PC, hooked up through HDMI to this projector. And if you have watched my Xiaomi Mi TV for a review, you'll remember that the latency was pretty bad. And I think most of the latency is coming from the Android OS, but it doesn't seem like that is the case anymore because latency here is actually much better. So, so it could be partially also because of the panel 
that was running on that TV. And in that video, I have talked about how it is more noticeable with a mouse than it is on a gamepad. Once you have a gamepad on a big screen, the latency is almost blurred out. You can't really feel the latency when you have a controller hooked up to a big screen. So if you go ahead and move the mouse here, it's actually not bad. It is very usable. It does feel more responsive than the Xiaomi TV, which is pretty impressive. And that is probably because we are using a laser projector instead of a whole display. And that could be why we're actually getting a more usable latency here. And uh, the kind of latency you're getting here, I wouldn't recommend it for something like CSGO or any Twitch shooters, but it is definitely playable for RTS games or MOBAs where latency isn't that big of an issue. But for anything else, it's uh, very usable and you're most likely not even going to detect it if you're not into computers that much. So overall, very impressed with the latency. It's actually pretty good and I would actually give it a pass, especially for a projector. So yeah, thumbs up. All right, and now let's go ahead and talk about the built-in Dolby speakers. Are they any good? Are they worth it? And how do they sound? Well, let me tell you, if you're someone who's looking for a simple solution to have a projection screen, as well as give you some pretty decent audio, then this is definitely good for that. But if you're an audiophile, then you might not enjoy this as much as you would, because you probably have experienced something much better, like a 5.1 dedicated surround sound system. But overall, in my opinion, whether it's playing games, watching movies, or YouTube videos, or doing pretty much anything, they're actually pretty good. The bass is very decent, uh, it can get pretty loud at 50%, and at 100%, if you have very heavy bass, then you get some distortion right at the top. But other than that, they are very usable speakers, and you're going to definitely enjoy them out of the box until you get a proper setup, if that's your thing. So here's an audio sample of what they sound like. So here we are about 25 minutes later and I think I've pretty much showed you guys everything about this projector. So what are the pros? What are the cons? Is this thing worth it? Let's talk about it. So first of all, the build quality and design of this thing is just very, very nice. It is very nicely crafted. It is very solid to the touch and overall the build quality is just really good. 
The design, on the other hand, it is simply beautiful. The whole thing is a beautiful piece of hardware, and you can proudly display it wherever you have it set up, and it's not going to alter whatever designs you have set up at your home. Unlike other projectors that I've seen online, although they are cheaper, they don't come with a pair of speakers that are as good, and really, they just look really hideous, in my opinion. They got all these hard edges, and some of them look like a 2002 piece of hardware. It looks weird, but that's just my opinion. And with this kind of stuff, you do get a really nice display, a pretty good amount of control for adjusting the screen, having it set up, and overall, the watching and listening experience from this thing is really, really good. And on top of that, it's got a pretty decent, acceptable amount of latency. It's uh, very responsive, and even with the keyboard and mouse, you're not going to have too much of an issue, but of course, I wouldn't recommend playing Twitch shooters on it. It's a project and it's got a pretty low amount of latency for what it is. The customized Android OS on the other hand, although it is very easy to navigate and it's pretty responsive, it's still in Chinese. Most of it is still in Chinese and you have to convert it using the settings APK shortcut app to get to the actual Android settings menu. But even then, you're not going to get the full experience when it comes to Android. You cannot install Google Play Store. Even if you install YouTube, it's not going to be able to log into your account. So you're just going to be watching some trending Vine videos. And if you try Netflix or Control, they're not going to work on the built-in OS. There are just too many problems and it's just very glitchy. But if you're someone who uses Kodi, then you're probably not going to have a problem with that. You just install Kodi, set up what you need, start up all the streams, and you're good to go. But of course, at this price point, you're most likely going to have your own system. You're going to have your Xbox, your PlayStation, your computer, or a Chromecast, or a combination of all of those. So once you have all those hooked up, you're going to have a pretty great time, and it is very easy to switch. And again, I totally recommend enabling the automatic HDMI switch. So you can easily turn on the projector as well as the console at the same time, and the projector will automatically switch to the console as soon as it finishes booting up. You wouldn't even see the home screen. So with all that being said, I've had this projector for about two weeks now, and really my only main complaint is that the OS is in Chinese, and there is nothing much I can change about it. I wish there was an option to disable the home screen or just have it display the options for which input I want to use, and that's it. But it is what it is, it is a projector that was made for the Chinese market. So is the price point worth it? Well, if you're someone who lives in North America, then you're most likely going to find a cheaper option on Amazon. But there are actually three reasons that you may decide to get this if you're someone who lives somewhere in North America. The first reason is that it can display up to 150 inches compared to the LG, which can do 120. And on top of that, according to the specs, it is actually brighter than the LG model. The second reason would be the design. It is by far the most sleek looking ultra throw projector out there. So if you're someone who's worried about looks, then this one is the way to go. And the third reason would be is that it's got a pretty nice decent set of speakers built into it, which is pretty awesome compared to other projectors which really don't have any of that stuff. And if you live anywhere else in the world, for example in Europe, then this might be a really compelling option if prices are too high to import mainstream stuff. But there's one thing that you should always keep in mind when buying something like this from China is that warranty is going to be a big hassle. And personally, when I buy stuff like this, I consider warranty to be non-accessible. I don't even try to get warranty. But that is something to definitely keep in mind. It is a nice projector. It is very well built and I don't think it's going to have any issues really. But do let me know what you guys think of this projector. It has been pretty interesting reviewing it and I do plan to make an update video in a few months or so to see if there are any issues that come up. And if I find any workarounds for the OS, then I'll let you guys know in that video. And that is pretty much it for this video. So thank you all for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care everyone.